So we're here at Flymaster, and we're going to find out about the new SD range of instruments. What can we what can we expect in the new range? Okay, the main difference from this range to previous is the fact that we now have a built-in SD card. Uh, there's also some other hardware that's hidden there, which is the uh, compass and the uh, the uh, accelerometer, which will measure g-forces in in, the, in all the instruments. All right. uh, the SD is in the whole range except for the Vario. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it doesn't make much sense with the Vario because uh, you don't have a GPS in the Vario. But um, okay, basically, the, what the, the SD card allows is for us to have the ground data for the whole planet. And we've actually managed to compress all the data of the entire planet onto an SD card, uh, which is like 50 gigabytes worth of data. We've brought it down to 11. Um, and it's all fairly quickly indexed. Okay. I've flown this thing everywhere. Uh, I was in Brazil last week. It's brilliant because when you're flying, you probably won't think, well, who cares about the altitude? I mean, you can see it. Well, you, sometimes you can't. Um, you know, when you're getting low on an XC flight and you think you're getting low, you think, well, I'm about to land, let me just start looking for a landing. And then you take a look at your AGL and you think, oops, I'm still 500 meters up. And if you think about it, most, most launches are way under 500 meters. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to have that type of information. Um, then there's also air spaces for the entire planet built into the SD card. Um, these airspaces can be ground ground related now, something which wasn't possible in the past because we didn't have the ground data. Now, you know, we have AGL, which you, you know you can't fly more than a thousand meters above the ground. That's possible as well. Uh, the system is smart, so you don't have to, unlike others, select the file of you know. Now I'm in Spain. I need to go to the menu, pick out Spain. Yeah. No, you switch it on. It knows where you are. It knows what airspace is related to that particular location. Okay. At the moment, I just, we just brought this thing to France, switched it on, and if I activate the airspace page, there we go. That's airspaces for the location we are. That's all the airspaces. Great. And, and how do you see the information on that airspace if you're trying to like okay. identify so, what, so what's what going on there? Yeah, what happens here is that we are outside all airspaces. We're not violating or coming anywhere close to violating airspaces. So good to know. all of it is grayed out. Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness. Otherwise, these guys would be definitely flying in a really <laughs> weird situation. <laughs> well, in any case, when it's when the airspace is not critical, there's nothing you know to know about the airspace. It's just showing you so that you know. Well, there's something there, and it's grayed out as you can see. The moment the airspace becomes active, critical, that means you are getting close to the airspace, either vertically or horizontally, yeah. the polygon which is being affected becomes black, so it becomes really dark yeah. lines. Okay? There, I can go to the menu and ask for the critical airspaces. There's nothing critical, but it tells me what's closest. So I can see all close airspaces. Here's this airspace, I'm at 2.4 kilometers outside the airspace. I know that the floor, uh, my, cur my current altitude is uh, 976 meters, and the floor, so the, the base altitude is 4,000. 4, so, but nothing to worry about. Even if I do fly into this polygon, mm -hmm. into this airspace polygon, unless I climb in a really nice thermal all the way up to 4,000, I mean, it's not going to even warn me about anything. It only warns me if I'm getting close. Okay? Yeah. The configuration, as in the previous model, you can kind of just how high you want the warning, you know, where do you want the warning at, at altitude, or where you want the warning horizontally. Okay, but you have to dive into the menus to find out the detail. It never shows you on the actual no, overview on the, map. On the overview map, you can select, you can place fields when you're using the designer, uh, where it actually gives you information about the airspace which is critical, which is causing the warning. Yeah. Okay? And then as if you're flying over an airspace. So imagine there's an airspace which is way down there, like at a thousand meters, I'm flying over it at 4,000, mm -hmm. while it's way down there. And since I don't have a motor, it presumes we're flying gliders. When I get to the airspace, it tells me fly over, so that so that I know that there's an airspace. It's down there. That's the, the ceiling of the airspace is at a thousand, and I'm at 4,000. Do I think I have enough enough altitude to go over it? It's up to me to take the decision. Okay. Is there any way to, to show NOTAMs on this or integrate NOTAMs on a daily um, basis? Yeah, what, what you have, both the, the, the SD works as the, as the background map, so it will always pick up that one. Yeah. But the priority map for the airspace is the same as what you do in the previous instruments. You can upload, using the designer, the, the airspaces. So if there's a NOTAM which is being set out for a particular comp or whatever, it's up to the pilot, obviously, to go to the designer, use an open air file, 
upload it to the instrument and what it does is it initially takes the the, pri the priority data is the one you've uploaded because it presumes it's a notem that's the higher priority and then afterwards it puts the other data mm. below it okay. there's a new instrument that we brought out in the range which is called the sd plus which yep. is gps sd plus which is over there on that side um, the difference between that one and the, the current ones it's a low cost live unit Okay, so before you'd have the Vario, the GPS, the NAV, and the Live. Now you have an intermediate unit, which is similar to the GPS, where you do not have the competition functions, uh, but this thing uh, has the Live tracking. Okay, so it's great for pilots that want to fly XC, uh, but are not really interested in flying comps. Mm -hmm. So they have all the features of the, of the, the Live tracking without the cost of it, of the, of the Live. So it's a, you know, it's a, a cheaper, more economical um, life tracking units. Yeah. Okay. Are these units upgradable? I mean, if you've got a GPS SD Plus, can you then no, physically there are different get some upgrade and go no, up? The, the no. hardware, the, the software is always upgraded. So in other words, yeah. we are always providing new firmware versions with new functionality. From uh, the hardware, when it's an SD Plus, it's an SD Plus. You cannot upgrade it to a live. Um, and the, the live tracking, how reliable has that proved to be over the, the last couple of years? I mean, it, there must have been quite a change in the performance there of the been. technology as, as the things have improved. Yes, there has. Um, lately, I don't know if you guys have followed the PWC, the Paragliding World Cup. Um, they're using live tracking, it's exclusively Flymaster live tracking system. All pilots are flying with the lives. Um, the system is so reliable that uh, in Turkey, they will be doing for the Super Final, no downloads so the whole track is downloaded from the live tracking so all the scoring is done from live no uh, there's no downloads okay in fact there was already a behind the scenes uh, experiment a couple of uh, the, the last comp and apparently went off quite well i didn't get any any negative news from them so it's it's working really nicely uh, you guys also probably saw the xalps and the xalps is also completely covered by by our live tracking system it's um, it's a really compact system so the amount of data transmits is low so it guarantees that the information is, is delivered there's a lot of new features that will become mainstream at the moment they're only used by the competition organizers we're kind of pushing the bar in the case of the, the pwc uh, where pilots can now report levels so they can report if there's a danger level they can report back and say Oh, I think it's level three, which has substantially changed. This is according to, to what uh, the PwC is actually, uh, the guys have talked to me. They say that in the past, people were reluctant to report a level three because you're on the radio saying, oh, it's a level three. And, you know, everybody, oh, you're a chicken. Yeah. So people were not reporting. Yeah. And nowadays, because it's a very quiet system, so people report back directly on the instrument. There's no voice. At the, at the base, they can actually see at the headquarters, they can see what's going on. They can see, okay, this pilot is reporting a level three. They can evaluate whether he's in like a Venturi, which would maybe justify the level three. Uh, and if there's more than one report, they can actually, you know, decide and decide to cancel a task, for instance, or stop a task. Stopping a task is also a push of a button. So what they do is they go to the system, they say, stop task. All the pilots get a message on their live and a siren, so they make sure they see it. Um, the guys at the at headquarters know that everybody has received or who hasn't received the message. When pilots receive the message, they're obliged to confirm the message. And so we get a confirmation back that the guy has actually got it and confirmed it. Wow, that's quite a development. So I didn't realize the instruments could actually receive data as well. So you can yeah. do it two way. Yeah, it's two way. It's always oh, really? I mean, two way. Okay. Uh, all the tasks are sent directly as well. So at these comps, the pilots do not have to enter the tasks into the instruments. There's a master instrument that enters the task and then all the instruments receive the task automatically. This is also... So it's, it's basically just one step away from the instrument flying the glider and not needing a pilot. Yeah, I was thinking about some servo motors quite soon, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get this done. <laughs> have you run into any problems where um, your live tracking doesn't work because you haven't got a, a cell phone mobile coverage? Uh, obviously, wherever you go, there's always, uh, s there's always a potential of, of cell coverage uh, not being available. I know, especially in flatlands, if you get really high up, you know, when you're at 4,000 meters in Spain, uh, it, you'll lose coverage. But the trick is, when you, the moment it gets coverage again, immediately the instrument will send your position. And not only does it send your position, it actually sends your entire track in order. 
right. which means that yeah, yeah. it picks it up. It, from picks, it knows exactly what's been sent, what hasn't been sent, and you know it guarantees that all the information is on the server. Yeah. You can also do that. Uh, another thing you can do based on that is the moment all the track is on the server, you go to the instrument's uh, flight log. And you simply say upload to XC server, and immediately that lands up on Leonardo or on uh, XC contest or whatever system you have pre configured on the computer. So you go to PC, you set up your account, and you say, I want my instrument to post my flight to this account on XC contest, for instance, and it gets posted. Brilliant. So it really makes it a lot simpler for the pilots. I mean, they just basically rock up at the competition, the instrument downloads its task, you fly it, beeps at you, tells you where to go, exactly. you land, you do nothing, go to the pub. Yeah, we ha I'm trying to get one that actually folds the glider for me, but I haven't quite got that right yet. <laughs> <laughs> just a question about um, how sort of whether weatherproof they are, you know, water resistant. They are not water resistant, so don't land in the water. So they are not water resistant, yeah. don't land in the water. If you do, we're quite happy because we've got some more for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you know, stay out of the water. Yeah. The reason they're not water resistant is that the, the pressure sensor needs to be exposed. Uh, none of these are waterproof at the moment. So, you know. okay. And if, say, they got rained on a little bit, you still... Uh, rain is usually okay, it's not a problem. Yeah. The killer is salt water. If okay. you land in the sea, yeah. I mean, you can you can basically strap it because it's it's really bad for the electronics. Salt water is not a good thing for electronics. So you, you can expect to see some more news from us uh, later this year or beginning of next year. There's even on the, these instruments, we have some new stuff coming out uh, with firmware upgrades. We're always creating new things. So today's instrument that you get today, tomorrow will be better than what it is today because we're constantly improving the firmware. Uh, besides firmware, we're also working on some new hardware configurations. So there's there's always new stuff uh, that we're working on. We kind of keep it a little bit quiet. We, yeah. don't, want, we don't want the competition to catch up. So yeah, that's okay. great. Right. Well, that sounds like really exciting stuff. Thanks a lot. That's really good. Thanks for giving us all the info. Thank you. Thank you.